Hi friends, Lindsay here, the Frugal Crafter. If you are watching live, if you could hop into the chat and just let me know if you can see my uh, desk here and if you can hear me clearly, that would be awesome. That way I know I'm broadcasting <laughs> to somebody and not just sitting by myself in my basement painting. Um, we are going to paint this kitten here. And um, I've already just taped some watercolor paper down to a just a piece of actually it's the backing paper to a watercolor pad. And um, and yeah, we're going to go from there. I hope you guys can hear me. I'm going to turn my mic up a little bit because it looks like it's really uh, OK. Good. Loud and clear. Awesome. I wasn't seeing the little little buttons move on my on my screen. So I've been kind of out of it this week. So hence the impromptu live stream and the unusual time live stream. So I want to thank you for just rolling with me guys and um, and coming along for the ride. Okay. Oh, lots of hellos in the chat. I love it. Awesome. I'm so glad you guys can join us. I think we've got a, a handful of folks here right now and we'll get going in just a moment. Um, today, I've actually um, published some more lessons in the hand painted holiday course. So if you're already enrolled in that class over on my teachable school, it's a class I launched a couple of years ago. And every year I like to put in some new goodies. So last year I put in some stained glass inspired watercolor cards. The, the first year we had six hand painted tags and six hand painted cards. Uh, no, four hand four hand painted cards and six tags. <laughs> oh, it's been a long time. Um, and then I just added four more cards and three more tags. And this in this installment, we're using ink tense blocks. So if you have purchased that class in the past, you have access to these new this new content, just got to log in and, and it's right there. It just uh, published this morning. Um, if you are curious about this class and you want to paint up a bunch of uh, holiday cards, then um, I have a 50% off coupon code for you. Since when I launched this class, it was a smaller class, I made the price lower. The regular price in this class is only $39. So with the coupon code, which is in the video description, you will pay $19.50 for the class. Some places have tax added. I don't know which places will and which places won't, but... Um, but that's the price. And I have added this very simple mistletoe card with ink tense blocks. This uh, sweet deer card here, again, ink tense blocks. This was my favorite, this um, kind of uh, winter landscape here. Very fun to do. And these are all free hand cards. So with um, the other um, projects that I put up, there were patterns, but these are more like draw with me. Since we're using the blocks, it's a very direct method and it may look a little um, intimidating, but trust me, you can do it. it. It isn't, especially if you've gone through the other lessons in the course. And um, we brought back the metallic paints that we used in the second portion or, or last year's cards so you get another chance to use those and then because I wanted people to have some other ideas on what to use those blocks for in case they bought them for the class I uh, showed you how to use them with some rubber stamps to do some painterly tags and I mean I had so much fun with these I was just making up bunches of them because uh, they're handy to have in the holidays you could even put like a little pocket on the back to slide a gift card in or you know put these on your presents I swear people will keep them for bookmarks and the nice thing about ink tents is once you've used it on a porous surface, either paper or on like fabric, it becomes permanent. So you could use this, uh, you can mail this as a postcard if you wanted to. You could, well, make it postcard size. You could use it as a bookmark. You could, um, you know, you don't have to worry about the stuff traveling once it's dry, which I like. So key is though, you have to wet the, you have to wet the blocks. You don't want to use them dry or they could uh, reactivate. All right. Well, thank you, guys. I'm just peeking at the chat right now. Thank you so much for your wonderful comments. Um, let's see. Clark Fine Art asks, the Winter Wishes tree card is beautiful. What's that silver metallic on Winter Wishes? That is embossing tinsel. And I do talk about some of those other uh, supplies that you may want to add if you've never stamped before and maybe you want to make some Christmas cards. Um, I do talk about that. It's a, just an, a clear embossing powder with glitter on it. But if you don't want to do that, like you're like, no, Lindsay, I'm not going down another crafty rabbit hole with you. Um, you can take a glitter gel pen and you could write like over a stamped image or you could just write it out freehand. There's a glitter pen called Jelly Roll Stardust and all it is is clear ink with a very fine glitter and it works really well for that effect. So, um, so, so many different ways you can do everything, which is what I love about art. So, um, 
I am going to just get started. I have got a reference photo here of this kitten. And honestly, I was just like, I wanted to, I wanted to draw a kitten that would be um, kind of like batting at ornaments. And I went to Unsplash and I looked for a kitten. I just took the first one that was gonna fit the bill. So that would be a piece of advice, guys. If you're overwhelmed with where to start, just, just pick the first thing that will work. If you're trying to find reference images or you're just you know, thinking about what to paint, just go with the first idea that you like. So I'm gonna keep that open here off to the side along with my, uh, my painting that I did earlier today. This took about 35 minutes, so um, hopefully we can keep this live stream around an hour or so, move that out of the glare. And I have just a piece of six by nine watercolor paper taped to a backing board from a, um, uh, a watercolor paper pad. I save the backings from watercolor pads and blocks so that I can tape them, so I can use them for taping my paper down. Because I figure if they're used for the backing paper of art paper, then they're probably fine for me to tape my paper to, you know, temporarily. And uh, these are what the ink pens blocks look like. You don't have to use these. If you have watercolor pencils, go ahead and use them. Um, if you have watercolor crayons, you can use them. It doesn't have to be these, but if you have them, um, it'll be fun to use them. I think sometimes, especially I've noticed this product for me, I had a really hard time getting like getting into it. So um, I know a lot of people bought them when they came out because the pencils are so awesome. So hopefully this will help you guys get some uh, get some use out of it. And I am actually going to start off with just kind of a light brown color and I'm going to sketch my cat in. And I'm actually probably going to look at the photo because I figured first generation is going to be better than going second generation. But I'll keep them both on there for you. Maybe if I switch your places, I won't have a glare. Oh, that's a little bit better. I don't have so much of a glare now. I'm going to start with a circle for the head. And this will just help you proportion things. I, I wasn't intending on having that much of the cat's body originally. So, I mean, you could do it on bigger paper and get the whole cat's body in there if you want to. I'm going to get a, an oval for, kind of partial oval for the, for the body. On the shoulder, I'm going to bring down a line for the paw, which is going to go right off the paper, and that's fine. Now leg up. Now this arm is going to, going to come up. Uh, actually, it should be a little bit more lined up here. Don't worry about hairy lines, because we can make those um, just kind of blend into the background. I want the pod to be reaching up a little bit over his head. And get the ears. And I look at the space like in between the ear and the paw to figure out where that's going to go. Straight flat area here, then another ear. Doesn't have to be perfect, so don't worry about it. I think I'm going to make him a little bit more close up. There we go. Let's make it come over just a little bit more. Yeah, I like the arm over here just to, just to balance it out a little bit more. He's like he's waving hello, but actually he's trying to knock something off the tree. Very cat-like. And then we've got the other haunch there, back leg. For the face, I'm just going to kind of draw a curved line across like that. In the center, we've got the nose. We'll just do a little triangle. Little line below the nose and then upside down V for the mouth. And the big kitten eyes on either side of the nose are kind of like a nose width apart. And if you want to see um, all the projects that are in the hand painted holiday course to see if it's for you, you can click the link in the video description and you'll be able to see the class projects on the right there on the enroll page. And the coupon code should show right up. But if not, um, it's Xmas 50 and you can type that in when you go to pay. But it should be that the link has the coupon code on it. So you shouldn't even have to do that. Okay, so I think that's really about all we need to get drawn in for the cat. I do want to put some Christmas ornaments on there, and I use my trusty circle template, which I found on Amazon. You can actually get, um, you can actually get one that has like double this. It's double this size. It's got two templates, 
and it's like five bucks and it's got even more sizes of circles. This one here, this by see through is like, um, is like quite a bit more. And I'm trying to figure out where I want the ornaments and which ones I want to use. I don't want to have something smack dab in the middle because I don't think that looks as good. So I want to have it a little offset. And I think I might actually do three ornaments this time because I think two might look kind of funny. So I'm going to put them on this one. Move my trays out of the way a little bit. I'm just using the red, the red block. It's another one over here that's behind the cat. And maybe we could do one further away and make it smaller. So it'll be way back there, back in the tree. And we'll make it a little bit further out. I love the templates because it, it helps me keep them symmetrical. I have a hard time with straight lines and circles. So if uh, you've ever said, I can't be an artist, I can't draw a straight line. You know what? Most artists can't draw a straight line. So I would just, you know, go with it. I'm just going to throw in some red there while I'm at it. Okay. Now we are going to wet the background of the paper. Hey, I see Joe Maisky in the house, one of our fine moderators. It will help you out if you have any problems. I'm going to tap off that dust there. Uh, <laughs> who did not get very much advance warning that I was doing live stream today. <laughs> I injured my back or something last week. I think it was like Friday. And I have just not been myself. It's uh, It was awful. It's, I'm feeling a little better today, but I just... I couldn't bend forward or back. If I bent forward or backward, I was in excru excruciating pain. But bending side to side was fine. Uh, it was a, it, it's the weirdest thing. I still don't know what I did or if I did anything or what the deal was. But um, like I almost felt sick to my stomach. It was it was not good. Spent a lot of time with the heating pad this weekend. I think it was some sort of like pulled, it's like a pulled muscle, but I couldn't figure out where I did it other than I slipped walking the dog, but I didn't hurt myself. I didn't feel like I hurt myself. It was just on like the icy frosty grass. Um, but who knows? I mean, you fall, you know, once you hit 40, you know, you step off a curb wrong and you're, you know, you're in traction practically, I feel like. All right. So I have just wet the background and I'm also trying to just get the edges of everything. So I, I want to let that color kind of bleed out. It's going to help me get like a little bit of a soft focus, especially on the, the tree. I think that will be pretty. And I'm going to use some teal. I, I thought that teal in the background was really pretty. And so when I'm using my intense blocks, like watercolor, what I do is I just... Um, I just pick a color I think will will work good and I use it like a pan. Now I used to be like, I didn't want to do this until I was sure I was done all any drawing I wanted to do, but these are so thirsty that like, they almost feel like they're dry almost instantly from when you, um, after you wet them. So, I mean, like I could go and pick that up in a couple minutes and it wouldn't feel like really, like really wet and awful. So might get your fingers a little dirty, but they're not that, they're just very thirsty. The way I can thing to describe it. I'm going to bring that up a little bit into the tree area, but I will be um, adding some some greens, but it's not going to hurt you at all to bring it up that high. I'll take questions in a bit. Um, I want to get this first layer of pigment everywhere first. And then we can let it sit for a minute, give it a little bit to dry. A lot of this picture is done wet into wet. And a lot of the um, the cards that we're doing, they're done wet into wet. Each project takes about a half an hour in that class. So um, obviously it's broken up into bite-sized chunks. So you can take breaks if you want to, but definitely they're definitely doable projects. Um, even during the busy holiday season. Okay, now, while well, that's wet, I'm gonna grab kind of like a, um, a hunter green or forest green colored stick. Let's see what this one looks like. Actually, I'm gonna break that one so I have a sharp edge. Um, I'm gonna draw some little Christmas tree 
uh, branches or sprigs or whatever you call those conifer leaves. I want to get them right there on that wet paper because they're going to give us that really rich color. Don't think about it too much. Put a line down and then put little lines off of it. Okay, and I want to wet those ornaments as well. The paper size I'm using, it doesn't matter what size you want to use, but this is uh, just six by nine piece of watercolor paper because I had some old aqua bee that I was using up. This is actually the thinner one too. Um, like they're, they used to have 90 pound and 140 pound and they were so, it was such a great value, but they haven't, um, they haven't been, I haven't seen them much lately and they're certainly not the value they used to be. All right, I'm going to go back to that green again. And I can throw in just a few little uh, sprigs in front of uh, maybe these two here. That one can is our focal one. That, that's the point of contact. The cat is hitting that one. So that's the one that we want to have the attention on. We can just put a little bit of camouflage on the other ones. And I'm going to use kind of like a, um, I would say a leaf green color or a sap green. I'm going to pick it up with my, with my brush and just kind of add some of that in there. Now where we worked on the wet paper, that um, green is going to stay. We're going to be able to see some of those lines still. This will soften them a bit, but not obliterate them. And I want to put this in there to show there's maybe some fullness to the tree and back that's kind of out of focus. Uh, next week on the 16th, I'm having a free class over at Michael's. I, I will add it to the video description. Uh, I forgot to put it in there today. Um, but if you go to michaels.com slash classes, you should be able to scroll through their upcoming classes and find it. They will be using colored pencils on uh, wood slices to make some ornaments. So we'll just kind of make fun tags and whatnot. I wonder, I'm going to try a lighter green and see if I can get a little bit of highlighting. I'm not sure if it will really show up very well, but I'm going to give it a try. They, these do dry a little bit lighter, so um, keep that in mind if you're using something like this uh, olive the light olive green, I would say. It'll show up a little bit lighter. just want to throw it in there as maybe a little bit of highlight. All right, I need to reorganize these sticks because they're in no particular order, and every time I put them back, it's almost like the, the holes disappear. It's like I just took this out out there, and I couldn't, couldn't find the hole that it, that it came out of. Very bizarre. Okay, now I am going to go ahead and just wet the cat. Now, don't worry if the background leaches into the cat a little bit because that will just give the cat that fuzzy quality, which is, you know, we want our cats to be, you know, have a little bit of a fluffness to them. I didn't put a lot of color down because um, it's a fairly light cat. And it can, it's really easy to kind of overdo it and get uh, get too much with intense blocks because it doesn't look like you have a lot down and then you add water and then it's like, whoa, it can be very deceiving. I just want enough so I can see where my lines are, but that's about it. And of course, you could trace the reference photo if you're not comfortable sketching, but I would highly encourage you to give it a try because you may be better than you think 
at drawing. You're just never giving yourself a chance to really go for it. Okay. Now there's a couple ways you can work wet into wet. I can go right in with um, with a stick if I want to. Uh, like if I know that, like for instance, okay, I know it's pretty dark up here. Maybe I'll go right in with a stick right on the wet paper. But I only recommend doing this if you know that you, you want that, um, whatever these lines are, to be pretty dark. So the little stripes on the top of the head, I'm cool with that. Maybe even the little stripes that are there around the eyes. But if I want to smooth wash, this is not what I want to do because that's going to give me, um, it's going to give me harsh lines and I'm not going <clears> to, <throat> excuse me, I'm not going to have the, um, uh, I'm not going to be able to blend it out basically. So I only want to do this where I know I've got some kind of darker area that I want to keep kind of textured and dark. Like, I don't think I want to do that on the mouth. So see, when I go over this, because I use the dry stick on wet paper, it's not going to blend out all of that. It's going to keep some of the lines because some of the lines became permanent when we put that on the wet paper. Because as soon as the ink tents gets activated with water, it becomes permanent. Water is the key. That's why I can like use this in a palette and I can re-wet it from the palette, um, but I can't re-wet it from the paper. So now I've got some color on my brush. I'm gonna go in and do these softer areas. Some of that fur on the, the darker fur on the back of the arm, get some on the cheek. You can see it almost wants to dry right up on me as soon as I wet it. It's a it's so interesting. It kind of feels chalky, but it doesn't wash away like chalk would. It's very, very interesting stuff. Using the art graph. Uh, last week really invigorated me on using the uh, the ink tents because they were so very similar. All right. Um, oh, another tip would be to have a little palette around that you can put your the sticks you use the most often, like especially if they look closer to other ones, so that you don't end up grabbing the wrong color. Now, one thing that I liked was I was using this dark color and it looks looked like a brown, but it actually came out kind of like a purple and I thought it looked really cool. So um, I'm going to go back in with that on this one here and hope to, hope to recapture the magic of the pop pads. I really love the way the pop pads came out in the um, in my demonstration on the, um, the practice alignment, I mean. Kind of unusual, but I think it looks pretty cool. The tough thing is with these is, especially if you don't keep them in your palette in the same order, which I don't even know how you keep draw, track of, of that, um, is that the colors look a lot different, dry to wet, like watercolors do. But your watercolor palette, you know, your paints don't go mixing around you're not picking them up and drawing with them, you know? So it is kind of a little bit of a challenge. I don't know how I'm going to, uh, I don't know what I'm gonna do about that. I thought I would put them in my pastel, my pastel drawers because I thought I had like a spare drawer that I hadn't used yet, but um, they were all used. I forgot that I put my all pastels. I thought I still had one drawer left, but I didn't. Maybe I'll buy another one. All right, I feel like I want another um, another shade of brown, maybe a grayish brown. I'm gonna see what this one looks like. 
See how the, a lot of the browns have kind of like a purple undertone to them, but I'll mix that with this warmer. Oh, that's kind of a nice brown. I should make a little palette somehow that's got just like room for like six of those sticks to, to stick into. I think that would work out really well. That's too dark. Don't let your, your pigment sit too long without being blended out if you intend to blend it out. Something I do with watercolor a lot. It does not work as well with the, <laughs> with the ink tents because it will darken on you. It'll uh, stain the paper before you're, before you're ready for it to. I got a big uh, drop of water there. That's not going to bode well, so I need to... I need to blot that out. Even though the intent shouldn't lift back up, it's still, it's still not exactly what I want. The shading around the muzzle is going to help. Uh, going to help it be a little three dimensional. And I think I want a little bit of a, like a yellowy color. Just kind of like Naples yellow color, I think will do good. I know it's a mess. It looks like a mess. Okay, so this next part is kind of fun. We're going to take um, the white stick and we're going to go in and add it to our paper, any place where it's a little bit lighter. And it's going to look a little scary right now, but when it dries, it's going to give us the that kind of texture, that fluffy texture that we want. And I would recommend if you are like, if you're going to Blick or something, you're going to buy a set of these. I would recommend uh, picking, picking up an extra of the antique white because it's um, or, or getting the intense uh, paint pan of antique white, which it does seem to be a little bit more opaque. But this is really, um, really a wonderful stick to have because it's... Um, it just works like a gouache. It's just so very convenient and you can go in like on top of your other colors and kind of build up body that you otherwise, you otherwise would have to either reserve the paper, but then you wouldn't have that texture, that, um, that kind of fuller texture that you would get from the, from the stick. And this is like dry to the touch, even though we just used that a couple minutes ago. I like the scribble, the scribbliness of it. And this drawing is a little bit more advanced than what we're doing in the class. Um, just in case you're, you're kind of, you're kind of seeing this and you're like, oh, I don't know that if the, all the cards are like that, that's too much work to put into a greeting card. This is kind of a fun, let's explore that media sort of thing. And there's a little bit of a uh, black on the tip of the ears that I want to get. And darken the paw pads a little bit more in the whole paw area. That should be a little bit darker in there. All right. Let me get the mouth in there. So I got the little little mark under the um, under the mouth, and you could do this with a pencil if you want to. I 
I love the look of the uh, using the blocks. I just feel like it's just so much more painterly and free. And doing the top of the eyes, just kind of like the um, tracing the top round part of the eye. And I can go ahead and put the pupil in there too, looking up at the That's kind of silly. <laughs> and maybe a little bit of pink in the ears. Go real light because it's they, there's not really pastel colors in the ink tents. I bet the um I bet the Derwent pan paints would go really well with this because they have a pat um, they have a pastel watercolor, but it feels kind of like the same texture. Going over that red with the with the pink. Oh, I wonder if I could use that in the nose. I don't think that's what I used on the nose, but let's give it a try. It's just so bright. But maybe if we mix some white with it, we will be good. We'll give it a shot. And then for the eyes, um, again, like we don't have any really bright light greens. I'm going to go down with a little bit of yellow and then add some of that teal over it, I think. And these colors will mer merge together a bit when I'm um, when I'm adding the coat when I'm adding the water. So I'm not too worried about that. I'm not I'm not. I guess I'm not. Um, I'm not really worried about anything. I'm not gonna worry so much about being super precise with everything because I know as I add water, things are gonna blend, and that's that's fine. I'm expecting that. All right, I'm going to see if there's any questions. So if you've got any questions, you can go ahead and pop them in the chat. Please type the word question in all caps or at uh, the Frugal Crafter should bring up, should like auto populate with my name. And then it'll, it'll show me like an orange bar and I'll be able to see that you're trying to ask me a question. And uh, I'm just going to go in and liquefy some of these darker areas that I put in. Um, to give you guys a chance to get some of those questions. Put in there. I usually skip around all the dark parts and then I'll clean my brush and I'll go to, um, I'll just kind of work my way lighter or I'll start lighter and work my way darker. It really doesn't matter. I like it once I get that layer of white down because um, on something like this with a lot of fur, having that white to mix into is, um, it just seems to, I don't know, help you uh, temper all of those crazy inky colors. Like to smudge stuff out. All right, take a look at questions. Oh, I gotta hopefully uh, watch your ears if you have headphones in because I'm gonna move my mic a little bit so I can turn my screen so I can see it a little bit better. And I don't want anyone to get an ear full of crazy noises. All right, I'm gonna start at the bottom and work my way up. Um, Joe asks, a couple folks asked for your brush sizes used today. Oh, let's see, so far I've used a number 12 round and I think I've used a number four round. So I'll begin a little round. I'm um, gonna, you know, let's see, go. Is it worth getting ink tent sticks? Art, Art at Jewels asks, I have the pans and the pencils in the ink tents range. Um, I have to say I use the pans and pencils the most. So, um, I think that would really just depend on um, on if you think you would use this, basically. I mean, do you like to pick up the sticks and work with your hands like that? Or is that messy and you don't like that? If you don't like the messy hands situation, I probably would skip it. I think the pencils and pans are more useful. But um, yeah, I'd say it's it's up to you. They, you know, I don't feel like the texture and the color are, is quite the same. Like the, the pencils, I feel, are super vibrant and transparent. The blocks are actually kind of chalky. They have a kind of a chalky matte finish to them. And then the paint paints are very opaque and creamy, almost like wash. So 
they're each three, all three of them have a little bit different of a texture, it seems to be, and they feel a little different as, you, as you're using them. So um, I really, I, I'd say really, it, it depends on your thoughts. Um, oh, Lisa Foster sent the super chat. Thank you so much, Lisa. That's very kind of you. Um, Clark Fine Art says you always make it look so easy and yet achievable. Um, I'm just going back to see if there's any other questions. I sometimes moderators hop in and answer, so I don't want to uh, don't want to step on toes. So again, type the word "question" in all caps or at me in the comments so I can see like a bar that pops up and and tells me somebody's trying to say something to me. All right, I think I. Th I think I've scrolled back to when I asked for questions. Okay. And there will be a replay available, guys. So um, so don't worry if you can't keep up or you just want to hang out in the chat for now. That's fine. Um, oh, Dolores asks, I've got some ultra suede and was going to paint with the ink tents. Then I read it will not stick to polyester. It says natural fibers. Has anyone tried this? Oh, I don't know. I've only used it on like cotton um, t-shirts and face masks and canvas, like canvas products, like cotton canvas aprons and cotton canvas uh, like pouches, things like that. So I'm not sure. I would test it on a sample. Okay, so we need some more definition on this guy. And I am going to, I want to use a color that's kind of in between. I think this brown's a little bit darker. Ah. Your sharp edge. Now this is fairly dry, so I should be able to blend out most of these marks that I put in. I want to get a little definition around the muzzle here because it's got just kind of like morphing into one shape, and that's not what I want. Look on the bottom of the chin there, a little bit darker. I want behind the nose to be a little bit darker to push that part of the face back. A little definition on the sides of the ear there. And we'll bring out a little bit of fluff onto the edge of the body, overlapping the background a bit. So when we get the little bit of, um, you know, the rows of dots where the whiskers come out of. Shade in this neck area where the fur is kind of creasing because the arm is folding over. You don't see so many individual furs as you do see the clumps of furs kind of sticking together. Shade on the side of the leg. Now, if you don't activate it, remember it will be like uh, water will be able to like smear it. So if you want to make sure that it's not going to like you're going to hand it to somebody, it's not going to smear. You just want to make sure that you've um, you applied some water on top. I don't think I did the eyes. I don't think I activated the uh The eyes and all. And regular color pencils will stick on top of this. So if you're like, uh, if you need to like brighten something up, you can brighten up with regular colored pencils. And you can add highlights with regular colored pencils or gel pen or whatever, what have you. But you want to activate that underneath first so that you'll have a little bit of um, a little bit of tooth there. I love to use color pencil over this because it lays down so nicely.
probably should have done a live stream tomorrow. It's a holiday tomorrow, but I didn't know what everybody else would be doing. Um, and this is the kids. Uh, the girls are seniors, so it's like, well, they might want to be around and do something. I don't know. I want to keep the day open. It's the last year before they go off to college. Oops. My screen went to sleep. All right, I think. Actually, while this is dark, while this is wet in here, I'm going to go in with my either a black or a really dark. Um stick you don't see and it's hard to tell do i have a black is that a green is it a blue what is this you know it's so hard to tell i've got to i've got to get some intense organization i don't know that appears to be a black i swear there's like four blacks in the set i don't know i think i've got a couple well i've got so many random i've got a few random uh things i want the eyes to be a little bit more open so i want them to Curve up a little bit more in the back. And little nostrils. And yes, you can do this with a um, with a colored pencil, but I don't know, there's just something I like about like, ooh, where will the end of the stick land? Because it's kind of big and, and awkward. I kind of just like that, like a bit of surprise. Is it going to land where I want it? Is it going to be a little off? I kind of like that. I don't know. It just kind of can give it a little bit of a spontaneity, uh, spontaneous, spontaneous look. I'm going to use uh, six round. I'm going to clean my fingers off first, though, because I've got some blocking tents on them. And I'm going to take some of this nice bright red here. And I'm going to add some color on the ornament there. I'll go in with a little bit darker of a red too. I don't think you need the set of 72. I will say that if you're considering getting the ink tents. How bright is that? That's kind of muted red. Um, I think the set of 72, because they're so um, so easy to mix. I don't think you need all of those colors unless you know just want to have the full set of something. I think it can actually be a little um, overwhelming because then you could have space to have it on your table and especially if you use these to do any card making or crafting it, it's such it's it's valuable real estate and if you're if you can't get you know you have to lay out these two big things of, of your colors it's it's hard to uh, get to the rest of your supplies that you want to use. I mean, cause look at this, look how much space, like times two, that's how much space that takes up. I think it's nice to have the variety, but I find a lot of the colors can easily be mixed just by overlapping a couple of colors. Um, I think it'd be better off to get like a set of 36 and get the pastel set of their watercolors. I think they would go really well together. And then you wouldn't have to, um, it would take up way less space. All right, I'm going to go back to this first brown that we used. That's more of that color where I feel like it needs it. You dip the uh, the stick in some water too if you want to get like a really strong strong line somewhere. It's not what I'd call like a what you'd want to use if you want a lot of precision. It's kind of what I would what I'd recommend using if you want to just kind of like express yourself and uh, put down a lot of pigment and just kind of have fun experimenting. I mean, you can get precision, don't, don't get me wrong, 
you can use smaller brushes and you can apply it with a brush or you could use the um, intense pencils. But for me, it's definitely, I grab these when I feel like I just want to experiment and, and have fun. I'm surprised at how different my sample and this one are coming out. And I'm wondering what that color brown was because I can't find it now. That's so weird. It's like a totally different brown than what I'm seeing, but I think it's just because they... Is it this one? Oh, maybe it's... Boy, that looks so dark. Could be that one. That one's not so purpley. I feel like I'm grinding ink. Kind of is like a... Well, not that I would know because I haven't... I don't grind ink, but when I see people do it on TV, that's what it looks like. some of that brown to the mix. That's bleedy. We're gonna work on the eyes. Don't judge me. We'll we'll get there. Darken up some of the areas here that I just feel like need a little more definition. I also want to have enough um, enough color around the face so that when I do the whiskers, they'll show up. It's a bit of a hot mess. Um, let's see. I think, I'm, I think I'm going to take questions in a minute. Of course, at this point, you're probably looking at this like, I don't know if I want her answering my question. She's got quite a mess going on there. But I think that, uh, I think that, oh, you know what? I think I need to, I think I maybe didn't have enough white here. Because if I look at that, that looks very milky and chalky. And I think I need some more of that. But I think I need to make the more pigment on my palette and paint it on. I might just add a little bit of gouache on there. That would make way more sense because I can just grab what I need. Clean my brush out and get some of this bleed proof white. This is what I like to use uh, for gouache. It's because it's convenient. It's all this, this stuff right here. Or the white intense is fine, but that's just a little more convenient for me right now. I'm going to try to save this train wreck. <laughs> But that's all right, because it felt like a train wreck when I was doing it the first time, so I know I'm right on track. Warm that up with some of that, um, with some of that uh, kind of tawny color. All right. Well, this brush might be too big, but I'm just going to, I'm just going to go for it. I need some floofy painterly strokes. I feel like I just need some like heft. We'll get there, guys. We'll get there. 
Uh, a question from Sheila Landry. How do the pH Martin White compare to Copic Opaque White? I don't have Copic Opaque White, so I couldn't tell you. Um, but the Dr. pH Martin's is really thick. It's also bleed proof. So if you go over like um, something that is bleedy, like watercolor pencils or uh, watercolor crayons, the color doesn't leach up or like brush pens, any of the like water-based markers, it doesn't leach up through. Um, let me just scroll back and see if there's any other questions. So I guess I did ask for some because I was, uh, I needed to change gears. Oh, so uh, JD says, way too cute. Oh, I'm glad you think so. Uh, <laughs> Eve Bucknick says, spatter, it needs spatter. We're not there yet, but you know, we'll see how bad it gets. <laughs> Uh, Christy Smith has a recommendation for the Caran d'Ache reversible palette for if you like to scribble your pigment out and then pick up the color. Or you can sand a plastic palette too and get it, make it all scratchy and it'll work well. Oh, Dolores says she made an intense palette by gluing wet dry sandpaper to a plastic clipboard. Well, that's a great idea. I would be careful of the brushes you use on it and use like brushes that aren't too precious so you don't wear them down. All right, I think um, yes, I think we are caught up. All right. Okay, thanks for the chance to dry a little bit. And a little bit of this. I probably should go with a smaller brush, but I don't know. I kind of think like the ink tents blocks, I just think, I kind of think they look better if you're being really bold and painterly than if you're trying to be fussy with a little brush. It's probably just my technique and inexperience with, um, with the blocks, but I've been having so much fun with them. They are very similar to the art graph, so I would say, you know, you know, I wouldn't duplicate colors between the two because they are so very similar. All right, now I'm just going to go in with some bright white. Um, I actually, I think I probably should dry this really quick so that um, I can dry it and get a smaller brush um, so that I can just lay the bleed proof white over on those areas where I want a really bright, a really bright white. And then um, I think I will grab just a couple colored pencils to do the eye and nose. I can also put the bright white highlights on the um, on our little ornaments there. Uh, Clark Fine Art asks, "Do we have homework if we're doing a class with Michaels?" Um, I'm just gonna move that so I don't keep my phone up. Um, uh, make sure your discs are smooth so they're probably sanded most most of them come sanded well enough but if not sand them and transfer your pattern onto the discs there's uh the pattern is available right on the michaels page i don't think they email it to you i think you can actually just download it right there from the page print it out and um and either trace or freehand it onto your ornaments so you're ready to go because um it will take the full hour to get those all three projects done and the point that we might not finish but it's very repetitive. So um, if we don't finish it, we'll be, uh, it'll be fine because I'll show you how to do the, the red leaf, green leaves and the center. So that's really all you need to know with that. It's, um, it's very, very repetitive after that. So I think I need a smaller version of that actually. Just a little guy here. I've got a radiator for my studio because the one I had last year, and I've had it since my like first apartment. It finally uh, gave up the ghost, and the air, the kind the kind of space heaters that push air, like the wall heater that I have in here, it's loud and they're not as efficient as they are. Those are better like for a big open area, but for a like an insulated office, the radiator kind work better. But um, 
man, it gets toasty. It's toasty and it dries. It makes the air dry and it dries my, um, dries my paper really quick, which can be a good thing, but sometimes it can be a little too fast. Don't worry about that situation. We're going to, we're going to fix that, but I just don't, I, I see it's going to be a, one of the next steps. So if you're kind of like, what is, what is going on there with that eye? Do not try to achieve that eye for that eye is going to be changing. I like to put on the gouache with the number four and spread it out with the number two. clumps of fur. See, dab and blend situation. It's kind of stumbling here. Kind of thin down the gouache here, so it'll be a little bit less vibrant. mess but that's all right we will we will fix it oh actually let's get the highlights on the ornament before we get too carried away uh, i like to use the lid as a little palette too that can be handy all right we're gonna just do a little bit of Little shininess. That's all we need. All right, we're gonna bring in the colored pencils here. We're gonna fix fix those eyeballs. They're a bit of a mess. And we're gonna bring in a little bit of a pale pink to fix the nose. That's all in the ears. That's also a little bit of a mess. Oh, uh, let me see. Let's go with a nice dark brown. This is, um, oh, this is actually black raspberry. I think that'll work pretty well because we've got all those purpley colors. The nostrils in there. Actually, I'm debating whether or not I want to turn this upside down. That way I can kind of see what is really off. This is a 90% uh, cool gray. Mm -hmm. 
And I think I'll do the gouache for the highlight in the eyes. That'll be fine. I could use a gel pen. Actually, I think I used a gel pen in the uh, painting. The uh, practice one that I did. Wisps, white fur in the ears. Thin out the mouth line a little bit. Uh, mix a little bit of that pink, one of the corally color. So that was a gouache and that coral intense block because the uh, the pink was just a little too pink. It's coming around. We're getting there. You didn't lose hope, did you? You didn't lose faith. Well, I feel like the uh, eyes should, the corners of the eyes should be a little higher. Giving her some heavy eyeliner. She's ready for the club. We'll see foam green. Never heard a thing. Ooh, I like that yellow that we used with the that we did with the intense block, but I don't think I think I'll put that in with a pencil. I think I need more white in that eyeball, but maybe I will use a gel pen. But I seem to have something with it because I don't see it now. So I guess I'll go back to the gouache. All right, I've got to find that gel pen, though, because I'm not attempting whiskers. Oh, there they are behind my computer. I'm not attempting, attempting whiskers with a brush. <laughs> uh, I also grabbed some brown pens. I didn't know if I would need them or not, but one of these works good and one of them doesn't. I, uh, I, I don't know what happened to my Uniball signals. I think I've used them all up. And so I've got these inferior <laughs> gel pens, the Jelly Roll and the uh, Arteza ones. They are not as good. Um, I also like my, uh, I like my Uniball, uh, no, what do you call it? My Posca pen, but I've refilled it so many times. I think I'm, uh, I'm at the point where I need to get a new one. Oh, man, come on. I'll take that back. Maybe our teeth one is better. Oh, marginally. Do a couple dark uh, whiskers in there too. Because the darn light ones are not getting the job done. But we can also put a little bit of black on the whisker there. I like to, if I'm going to go in with a different media like this, I like to go put it in a couple areas so that it's not so um out of the blue I'm going around the white gouache though I don't want to clog with my pen so I'm going to put this uh in the dark part of the eyes all right then I'm just going to throw in a couple little whiskers man even this doesn't want to stick I think the ink I think it's 
I think pens have a hard time on top of the ink tents blocks because this is having a hard time. Oh, well, maybe this pen's dry. Gosh, that could be it. I've had these for a while. I might have just used this one up. Man, oh man. I can't even get the little dots on there. Yeah, I think this one's had it. Let's see how this one's gonna do. Oh, this one's fresher. Get some little dots in. This one's so fine though. Got any questions? I'll come in in a second and follow up. Finish up any other questions that we have. Oh, well, you know what? Another tip I want to share is that um, if you are doing colored pencil, you definitely want to let that paper dry or dry it with the heat tool before you go in. Because if you go into the colored pencil and your paper is still damp, you're going to flatten the tooth down of your paper and then nothing will stick on top of that. You'll just have a really shiny slick spot and it will be very aggravating. And I've done it on many occasions. So you can trust me on that little bit of advice. I only used two colored pencils on the first one. This one is taking me longer and it's giving me more grief. I think it's harder to draw when you're trying to talk at the same time. That's my story and I'm sticking to it. A little bit of pink around the mouth because the fur is thinner there and you see a little bit of pink. Now in the ears I see more gray. I don't know if I want to put that gray in there or not, but I'll put that there. Anywhere else that could use some gray. Maybe under the muzzle. Getting more fussy with this than I intended. It's kind of like, well, while we're at it, we've gone this far, I might as well uh you know, might as well go whole all hog with these colored pencils. <laughs> See how well they stick on top of that, though? I feel like i got to get it to some, like, level of done, and it just isn't there yet, you know? That's why I just like to keep throwing stuff at it until I feel... I feel like it's it's done enough. Then you get to a point where it's like, geez, I don't know if I'm making it any better. I feel like I'm just making it more fussy. What do you do, right? What do you do? Now, the truth is everybody struggles. You know, everybody struggles sometimes. And, uh, it's healthy to know that, right? <laughs> I'm not putting on airs. Completely, uh, I'm completely honest about my hot mess situation that we got going on here. You know what? I don't think I have enough contrast. Let's go into a little bit of dark brown and see what happens. I hope this is one of those paintings where I look at it the next day. I'm like, oh, that wasn't so bad. Sometimes that happens. I'm like, oh, this is awful. You know, and I'm like the, the piano player on Sesame Street that wants to like bang their head on the uh, on the piano. You know, he'll be like, twinkle, twinkle, little. And then he'll like, can't remember the rest of the song. And he like bangs his head on the, on the piano. That's how I feel sometimes, like right now. <laughs> I 
Oh, I think this is better. This little contrast. It's a little possessed, but cats do kind of look a little possessed. I think when I take the tape off, I'll be like, oh, it's beautiful. <laughs> All right, I'm gonna answer your questions. I think I'm about, about done with this. Uh, this little guy here. Right after I do this. <laughs> yeah, it's fine. All right, let me look and see what we have for questions. Maybe we'll put this, let's set that there. <laughs> so you don't see my awful thing. Okay. Um, I'm going to start the bat at the bottom and work my way up. Clark Fine Art asks, do you find bleed proof white gets thick in the jar? I always make sure that my lid um, is tight. Yeah, it does get thick. It almost gets hard. You can just spritz a little um, water. I honestly, to tell you the truth, I always use tap water, but you know, it'd be probably wise to use distilled or boiled water just to make sure there's no like bacteria in there but yeah you can just get a little spritz water with glycerin is good too because that helps draw the uh the moisture in sheila landry says i love that you use different mediums that looks fabulous i used to come by in the beginning and think it wasn't going to be good but it always comes together <laughs> oh thank you so much i really needed to hear that today um Question, do ink tents react okay with OMS? I don't know. I've never used it with odorless mineral spirits. Um, <clears throat> I reckon that it would probably move a little bit, but um, I don't know why you would, because you're probably using it on watercolor paper, which can certainly handle watercolor. Uh, I'm not sure. I'm not sure, to be honest. I, I probably would, would just use water. Odorless mineral spirits probably has some sort of water content. Uh... All right. I don't think there's any more questions unless there are right at the end. Um, yes, from Hobby Artist. She asks, or he, I'm actually not sure. Um, what is your favorite way to add white highlights in water media pieces? I would say that either like a Posca pen or a gel pen um, or the bleed proof white is my favorite. Just depends what I have handy. Um, I'd say probably a gel pen is more convenient, but if you have like the bleed proof white or, or white ink tents, the white ink tents pans are fantastic. They're kind of, they're very similar to the bleed proof white, but just in a convenient pan. Um, it really doesn't matter much to me. I just want something convenient. Sometimes I use a colored pencil if I don't want a really opaque white. I just want something kind of soft. It really, it's like whatever white is closest to me is my favorite white. I'm not very picky. You got to say though, guys, it's something about, it's worth taping your paper down because that white border can hide a multitude of problems. Because, I mean, I don't think that looks that bad. <laughs> now that I got a white border on it, that's fine. That's fine. And, hey, my back doesn't really hurt anymore, so I'm feeling good about that. Um, oh, let's see. The Baileys ask. Wait, I had one question. The whiskers in brown, is that shadowing for shadowing? That's more because my white, I couldn't find my, my white gel pen wasn't sticking. So yeah, I wanted them to show up and uh, the white, just the gel pen was, had had it. I need to order some uniball signals, I guess. Um, yeah, sometimes you just gotta go on your own and do what you think it needs versus what the, um, you know, what your reference tells you. I'm gonna add a little highlight on the nose though. See if I can eke out a little bit of white from this gel pen. Gel pens. Yeah, they're not my favorite. Strike that, reverse it. Go back to when I said my what well, my favorite is. It's not a gel pen. Luckily, the fine tip Uniball Signos and the um, the fine tip Posca pens go on. They they're a pretty good price uh, on Amazon. You can get a pack of three of either for around like six bucks. So that's usually what I do. And they used to sell a pack that, and they might still do. Um, that was like it was. Um, 
four, uh, three of the Uniball Signos and three of the um, of the Posca pens, and it would be like eleven dollars, and that was really handy. I think I bought that once, and then um, I just kept refilling my Poscas. You know, I really kind of want some black for the eyes, actually. I think that would be nice because that would give it a little perk. Oh, there's my black. I just ordered a box of white Prismacolor pencils because I have so many little stubs, white pencils right now, Prismacolors, and I always, I just go through them. Okay, I think that, man, just adding that little black, adding that Liza Minnelli eyeliner. A little bit there, bring a little focus into the face. Yeah, sometimes you just gotta, you gotta fuss with it a little bit and, and it'll get there. Even if it's the next day, it'll, it'll get there. It always does. You gotta have faith. A little bit of detailing with this dark brown. Oh, I have to say the nice thing about the hot mess stage is that you can get real brave because you're like, well, you know, uh, I can't get any worse. He's actually kind of cute. I'm going to leave it. I think it's fine. Uh, well, I'm going to look back for questions. So if you have any final questions, go ahead and pop them in the chat. And I think that's what I'll put both of these here. You can see both of them. Mine will scoot over. Actually, I think I like this one better now because it's a chunkier kitten. It actually looks a little bit older, too. Um... Let's look for questions. Uh, Lisa Foster asks, is there a secret to taping down the edges? Mine are never straight or even. Um, you know what? If you can put your watercolor paper on a dark surface like my cutting mat here, then you'll be able to see through your tape when you put it down. You'll be able to see the white of the paper versus the black. Um, and for tape, I use the masking tape from Dollar Tree, and it's not as sticky as masking tape from like the hardware store. It works great, and it's cheap. So... That's what I use. And also heating the tape with a heat gun or a hairdryer, if it's hard to remove, that will loosen the adhesive and make it come off a lot easier. Oh, Joe, Joe Maisky uses a tea ruler. Well, aren't you fancy, Joe Maisky? <laughs> I do not get that fancy. I'm just going to eyeball it. That's a good idea, though. Uh, somebody said they found the, uh, sticker book that I showed in a sat chat a couple weeks ago, um, on Amazon for just under 15. Yeah. They have them cheaper than books a million. I got a, for some reason I got found on the clearance bin for $10, but then they had, uh, they had ones upstairs for full price. I don't know if it'd been a return or not, but there was nothing wrong with it. And the sticker said that it was the right book. The price tag said it was the right book. So um, let's see. Garden Pansy says, gosh, so cute. Do you have a streaming schedule? I remember always coming to the Friday stream, stream, screams <laughs> to paint some flowers and things. Um, no, I don't have a schedule. I'm just kind of doing them when I feel like doing them. Um, yeah, I just, uh, I just want to, I, I want to do streams if I feel like doing them, I guess. Um, it seems like when I would do it at the same time, eventually people just kind of like, oh yeah, Friday will be a stream. And then there's kind of like, I think sometimes if you know it's coming every week, then you might be like, well, I'll just come next week. You kind of maybe take it for granted a little bit. I don't know. But um, yeah, I'm just going to do it when I feel like doing them. So I'm not locked into a schedule because, you know, life can be crazy. Some days you have time, some days you don't. Um, okay. I think, yeah, I think that I'm all caught up unless there's any new ones at the end. Oh, there are some new ones at the end. Hobby Artists has another question. How are, travel friendly are ink dense blocks? Would TSA scrutinize them as much as they do paints? No, they shouldn't. They're dry. Um, yeah, they should be fine. They also have, they're also available in a pan paint, like a watercolor paint palette. And those I would think would be would be much more travel friendly just because they're more compact, compact. You have more colors and less space. Ooh, Serena Williams is making cards this year. Awesome. Oh yes. Don't forget the uh, sale on my um, hand painted holiday class. There is Christmas cards, winter cards, a Hanukkah card. Um, 
and I'm thinking about adding like other holidays throughout the year. I have to get my act together for that. But uh, but that's that's a, that's a thought I've had. <laughs> we'll see if it ever comes to fruition. I've never promised it. So um, uh, so that is 50 percent off. If you want to grab the link in the video description, it's regular thirty nine dollars. It's on sale for nineteen fifty. So it's a great way to be able to spend some time doing some crafty stuff, some painting before the holidays. And uh, most projects are around a half an hour each. So not too, um, not too time invasive. Let's see. Ron asks, what's your favorite travel watercolor brush? I like the Cheap Joe's Pseudo Sable number 12, number 12 round. And there has not been one yet that can unseat that as my favorite travel watercolor brush. But it's not a water brush. You need to have water. All right. Well, I think I'm caught up. I want to thank everybody for joining today. I hope you enjoyed the stream. It's funny how it's the same reference, like an hour apart and get completely different, different cats. But um but that's all right. I kind of wish I did these on a card because I totally would send those off to somebody. I guess I could like crop it down to card size and and stick it on a on a folded piece of cardstock, or I could do an order size card. Oh, why not? I think that I it's, think these would be really cute on a greeting card too. Um, so anyway, I guess that will do it for today. Again, thank you so much for watching, and please hit the thumbs up button before you go. Leave a comment before you go if you like these live streams, um, and we'll see you next time. Bye.